stern authority, a shrouded past, and a relentless interrogator chaplain of the Dark Angels, today we're going to uncover his secrets, not with bolter or blade, but with brush. Welcome to The Painting Coach, and today I'm going to show you how to master painting Asmodai, the interrogator chaplain for the Dark Angels. A huge thank you to Games Workshop for sending me this model early so I can review it and create some content. Let's get painting. I've primed the model with Zandri dust for the simple reason it's going to make painting those robes and all the smoke coming out of his backpack really easily because we're painting lighter colours on light colours as opposed to trying to paint light colours over a dark base. To get started, we'll block in all of the dark areas, things like his armour, his backpack and the green cloak. I'm going to paint these using AK Black. You can use whatever black you want. A bad and black from Citadel is absolutely fine. I'm not worrying about basing the metallics because the silver and the gold paints will cover quite nicely over the Zandri dust. We'll paint the green hood and cape next, and the colour I'm using for this is Caliban Green. Now I'm going to paint this over the majority of these areas, but I am going to leave some of that black in the recesses to act as a shadow. Now this may take two coats to cover properly, just make sure it dries before we go back in. Next up, I'm going to start highlighting, and this is going to be with a 50-50 mix of Caliban Green and Warpstone Glow. And the reason I'm doing this is to ease that transition to the lighter green, whilst making sure it doesn't get too out of control. Because this is material, so we want the transitions to be fairly smooth. Again, we're painting this over most of the areas, just leaving that Caliban Green and Black in the recesses, building up the light. I'll then move on to pure warpstone glow, and this is where we're starting to really focus on those areas that are going to catch the most light. So it's all the parts of the hood and the cape that are facing upwards. You've got some nice big areas there. Now this paint doesn't cover particularly well, and that's fine. We can use that to our advantage because we'll just build up the layers where we want more light. We'll add a final highlight with a 50-50 mix of moot green and warpstone glow. And for this, we're just looking for those hard lines and those really sharp folds. So we're looking down the sides of the hood and we're looking for where the cape flares out over the shoulder pads as well. We'll get a nice crisp highlight. We'll base all of the gold next and the colour I'm going to use this is Dragon's Gold from Two Thin Coats. Now, you can absolutely use Retributor Armour. The colour is exactly the same. The coverage is the same as well. I'm just using this because it gives me a little bit better control in terms of how much paint I've got on the palette. Shading the gold is fairly straightforward. We just take a little bit of Reitland Flesh Shade and wash this over all of the areas. Now, we don't want to flood the areas. We just want to make sure we've got enough to get it into those recesses, and you'll start to see the colour developing and really getting a nice, nice ready gold colour with some nice shading in the recesses. I'm going to highlight all of the gold using Glistening Gold, again, from Two Thin Coats. If you haven't got this, if you've got something like Liberator Gold, that's absolutely fine to use as well. In terms of how we highlight the gold, we're looking to catch the sharp edges first and foremost, and that makes it really easy to highlight because with not too much paint on your brush, we can just drag it along the edges and get nice, crisp, bright gold highlights really easily. This is a fairly quick step. Just take your time, and if you feel like you need to go back in and make any corrections, you can use the previous colours to do so. I'm going to block in the leather next, and the colour I'm going to use for this is going to be Rhinox Hide, which is a nice dark reddy brown. In terms of the areas I'm looking at, we've got the handle on both the Crozius and the sword. We've got his belt, and we also have the holster for his bolt pistol as well. So just take your time with this and try not to spill it on any of the gold bits that you've already finished. Next up, we'll take some Doom Ball Brown, which again is a nice ready brown colour. And we're just going to use this to highlight the majority of the bits that we've just painted with Rhinox Hide. We just want to leave the Rhinox Hide in the recesses, so it saves us going in and adding a little bit of a wash. We want to be very careful with this because, again, we're working across areas you've already finished, like the gold. So just take your time. Make sure you've got a good tip on your brush. The final highlight we'll add on the leather is going to be with Scrag Brown, which is a nice orangey reddy brown. We don't need too much of this. We just want to put little dots and dabs of this on the areas that are going to catch the most light. And this is going to give us some nice bright spots to draw attention and make the model look really nice on the tabletop. When it comes to the holster, You've got a bit more surface area to work with, so we want to make sure we've got a little bit on our brush so we can drag it along those edges and get some really nice crisp highlights. The next few colours we're going to shade all at the same time, so we'll paint the bases first. 
We've got the wax on the purity seal, so we're going to use some Scream of Pink for that. Now, again, as I've said all the way through, just be careful as you come to areas that you've already finished. For the paper on the purity seals and also the rocks on the base, we're going to base all of them with Dawnstone. So this paint will take two coats to cover properly, so just take your time with this. Finally, we'll paint all of the silver areas. Now, I'm using Circoat Silver for this. If you haven't got this and you've got Lead Belcher, that's absolutely fine. Dark aluminium from Vallejo also works perfectly well. Just take your time around bits you've finished. Make sure you don't spill it onto any of the lighter areas because it can be a bit more difficult to clean up. Like I said earlier, we're going to highlight all of these colours at the same time and the colour we're going to use for this is Null Oil. Now, we don't want to flood any of these areas. We just want to take our time, make sure we haven't got too much on our brush. And of course, be careful when you're coming across those areas you've already finished. Now, it is inevitable you may spill some. That's okay. Just take as much care as you can. To highlight the purity seals, we'll first take some Screamer Pink and just dot this along the raised areas to simulate some light hitting those wax shapes. We'll finish them off with some Pink Horror. Again, just painting this inside the Screamer Pink from the last stage to really make them pop. To highlight the paper of the seals, we're going to go back to Dawnstone. Now, firstly, we're going to pull our brush across the edges, get a nice sharp highlight. We're then going to work it at a 90 degree angle across the purity seals, so we're painting them horizontally, just working the layer along and just adding some subtlety, focusing on those areas that have got raised creases and folds. We'll finish them off with a little bit of administratum grey, again, pulling it down the edges to get a nice sharp highlight. And then we'll focus those horizontal lines across the parts of the paperwork that are going to catch the most light and have got those nice folds and creases on them. To highlight the silver, I'm going to use Chrome from Vallejo Model Air. If you haven't got this, you can use something like Roomfang Steel from Citadel. And what I'm looking to do here is just catch the edges and sharp parts of the metallics. So again, it's very similar to the gold highlights. So if we make sure we haven't got too much on our brush, we can just drag it along those sharp raised areas to get a nice crisp highlight. If we do make any mistakes and we do go a little bit overboard, we can always go back in and fix it with the darker silver colour that we used earlier. Now I've gone back in and fixed any mistakes on all of the robes, so let's get them painted next. Now I wanted to go for a slightly more desaturated bone colour rather than the bright bone colour. So to do this, what I've done is I've mixed Zandri Dust and Rakar Flesh in a one-to-one -one mix, and I'm now going to paint this over the majority of his robe. Now this is going to go on okay, you will need two coats to get a nice bit of coverage on there. But the bonus of doing it this way is that once you've got your first layer down, and again we're focusing on those parts of the robe that are going to catch the most light, so we're only really leaving Lars Andre dust in the deepest recesses. What we're looking to do is as we highlight up, we'll put the second layer only on those areas that are going to be focusing upwards. So that way we'll get a nice transition from the Zandri dust into this Rakarth Flesh mix. To continue highlighting, we're going to use pure Rakarth Flesh. Now again, we're going to use this fairly liberally across the robes, leaving the previous colours in the recesses. But this essentially is the base colour for the robes. We're just building up to it. This is the mid-tone. So we've got the darker colours in the recesses and we'll highlight up from here. So we are focusing on those parts that are going to catch the most light in general. I'm then going to take a 50-50 mix of Pallid Witch Flesh and Rakarth Flesh. Now this is going to start to give us a much brighter colour. I'm going to use this to start focusing on the sharpest folds and also any general areas that are going to catch a lot of light, such as down his right thigh and across the back of his robe as well that sticks out on his right leg because that's going to catch the most light. To finish the robes, I'm going to use some Pallid Witch Flesh. Now, I'm only going to use this on the areas that have given me some nice sharp folds and creases. So, for example, where the robe hangs over the greaves and his knees, we're going to get them there. And also across the chest piece where we've got those really sharp folds, we're going to add it on there as well. Moving on to painting his black armor. Now, there's not a huge amount of this, so this is a fairly quick step, but we do want to make sure that we take our time. Firstly, we're going to highlight all the edges of the armour using a dark grey. Now, I'm using German grey from AK, but you can use something like Eschen grey from Citadel as well. And if you haven't got a really dark grey, then just mix some black and white together until you get one. It's really easy and straightforward to do that. I'm looking to catch the edges of all of the armour. Now, I've been a little bit untidy as I'm going through here because I'm probably rushing it a little bit. So what I'll do is go back in with some black afterwards just to tidy up some of these highlights. 
To finish up, I'll add some Dawnstone over that German grey. So this is a nice brighter grey colour. Again, make sure you haven't got too much on your brush. You just want to drag the tip along the sharp edges of the armour because this gives you a nice crisp highlight. Now, I'm pretty happy with how this looks. If you want to, you can take some Administratum grey and just add it on the real sharp corners. And I might do this in some areas, particularly the face mask, just to put some emphasis on it because otherwise it's going to look quite dark and get lost under that hood. We'll paint all of the smoke coming out of Asmodee's backpack next. So we need to paint this white and the colour I'm going to use is Corax White. So a little bit of water, thin it down and just work it across all of the smoke, being very careful against areas that you may have already finished. Now, this is fairly straightforward. I do like Corax White as a paint. Some people don't, but it works really well for me. Just take your time and get a nice even coverage. For the smoke itself, I'm going to use two speed paints from Army Painter. I'm going to use Gravelord Grey and Ashen Grey. Now, if you haven't got these and you've got Citadel equivalents, you can use something like Soul Blight Grey, which is the wash, and also Basilicanum Grey. So what I'm going to look to do is work fairly quickly across the model, and I'm going to take that Ash Grey first, and I'm going to paint this across the majority of the smoke. So this is everything that's coming out of the backpack, and towards maybe the lower third as well. Before that's dry, I'm going to clean my brush off and I'm going to put this into the Gravelord Grey and I'm going to paint the rest of the smoke. When it comes to the Ashen Grey that's still nice and wet, I'm just going to dab with the Gravelord Grey into it and this is going to give me a nice simple transition. If you need to put more of the Ashen Grey in just to thin that mix out a little bit, you can. And if it does get a bit out of control, you can add some speed paint or contrast medium in there just to thin it out on the model as well. The key with this is that you work really, really quickly. Now, if you do make any mistakes, it's really easy to start over again with the Corax White, but generally, you'll be able to pass most of this off and it'll look, look fairly good straight off the bat. Once that's completely dry, I'm then going to add a second coat of the Grave Lord Grey on the bottommost part of the smoke, just to make it look really, really dark, but while also maintaining that little bit of highlight that you're going to get from the speed paint. Finally, I'm going to take a little bit of Corax White and just highlight the top areas of smoke because this is where it's going to be the absolute lightest. Now, start off just by adding a little bit. You can always add more if you want. The last thing we need to do is paint the power nodes on Asmodee's sword and his interrogation weapon on his back. So I'm going to take a little bit of very, very thin corn red and paint this around the power nodes. When that's dry, I'm going to paint the power nodes themselves with Mephiston Red. And then I'm going to use some Wild Rider Red to highlight them. Now this is fairly subtle, so you don't want too much on your brush, and you just want to drag it along the shape. For the brightest points, I'm going to use some Luganath Orange. Now this is going to give me a nice highlight, but it is also going to make them look a little bit too orange. So to fix that, I'm just going to glaze over it with some Evil Sun Scarlet to give me that nice bright red effect. So there we have it, the secrets of Asmodee have been revealed and mastery is yours. I really hope you enjoyed this video, if you did leave a like and a comment down below. And I'm sure you want to know how to paint the Gene Father of the Dark Angels, the Lion himself, so check out this video here. Thank you so much to all my patrons for your support, I will see you all next time.